Today we're going to be looking at some mothers who shouldn't have kids. Now I know that's a very extreme thing to say, however, I feel like it's going to make a lot more sense very soon. Just your average boy mom. I have three boys and one girl. I love my daughter and it's super special, but those boys have a chokehold like no other on this mama's heart. Your poor daughter knows and feels that you prefer your sons. Don't be surprised if she cuts contact later in life. If you have more than one child, I feel like a question you're always going to get asked by your children is who do you love the most? Now the majority of parents will say, oh, you know, I love you all equal, which is true. However, some mums are different. That mum literally said, I have three boys and one girl. I love my daughter and it's super special, but those boys have a chokehold like no other in this mum's heart. So that mum has basically admitted that she does love her sons more than her own daughter. I have three boys and one girl and I cannot imagine even feeling this way, much less writing it down for others to see. I don't understand how someone could feel this way. Something tells me that she is a mum's boy, which is basically a mum that's like weirdly obsessed with her son. Most parents in this world love their children. However, there's a certain type of mum who basically have like a mini crush on their son. And I feel like a lot of times the sons are always athletes. Like it's always like football moms or soccer moms. What is that TLC show that I used to watch on this channel? Is it just a mum's boy? Basically it's moms that are very very obsessed and close with their sons but kind of controlling of them. Their sons are like 30 years old but like the mums treat them as if they're like five and like they basically boss them around and don't like the fact that they've got a girlfriend or wife. And that mum right there is giving me them types of vibe. I think it's something missing in their romantic relationships that they can't or won't deal with. They see their sons as a way to fill in something missing from their partners. I'm gonna have to agree if you like I feel like a lot of times these mums secretly fancy their sons but not in like a sexual way just like they love their sons like too much and I know people might roll their eyes and be like oh you can't love your son too much I feel like you definitely can like the love kind of turns into a controlling thing but yet again I just feel so bad for her daughter like I know for a fact her daughter knows that like she loves the sons more the mum will hopefully never admit it to the daughter however I feel like the daughter still knows deep down can't imagine what could possibly go wrong hi I'm considering offering drop in swim times this summer at our backyard pool so mums can run a few errands or have a break Children must know how to swim, however there will be a lifeguard and an adult in the pool area at all times. Max up about 10 kids at a time. I'm still working on the legality, but is this something that people would be interested in? How much would you pay for a two hour block? Okay, so I understand what that mum has done, however that is illegal. You can't really turn your backyard swimming pool into a drive-by swimming pool. And then by the way, this is a picture of it. Like I'm so sorry, that is just like a normal swimming pool. However, you can't turn it into what you want to turn it into. Also, who wants to guess that like the lifeguard is going to be like her 16 year old son. Probably a kid he doesn't want to be there. Let me check the legalities of running an unlicensed drop-in daycare in the most dangerous area of my house. Yeah, I know. I've also got a few more questions. If a child needs to go to the toilet, where do they go to the toilet? Are they allowed in the house? Will there be food? What happens if someone gets injured? Do you know first aid? I feel like this is one of them situations where it sounds a lot better in your head, but whenever you actually try to do it in reality, it just doesn't work. I have a strong feeling the lifeguard is this poster's teen child. I have a strong feeling about that as well, and I also do have a feeling that they're not even a lifeguard. They probably don't even know how to swim. A lot of people don't know that whenever it comes to drowning, like you can actually drown in like one centimeter worth of water or is it one millimeter? It's not a lot. Like if you literally like pass out and like you fall in the puddle, you could technically drown. I was gonna say best luck to this mum, but honestly, I hope it doesn't go ahead. Let's play what was in my toddler's poop. I knew about the marbles still missing one. I expected the rock the quarter surprised me. I'm so sorry, but if your child is putting that out, your child has an issue. Why is your child eating so many rocks? Look, I understand kids eat stupid stuff. I used to eat Play-Doh and I think I ate dog poo one time. However, we've got four items on the screen. A marble, a quarter, and rocks, which I literally thought were like M&Ms or Skittles. And apparently you're still missing some. So is that currently inside your child? Are you waiting for your child to poo it out? Also, why are you laughing about that? Like, that really isn't funny if your child has a habit of swallowing things. You know, you need to get that sorted out immediately. So toddler eats random objects. Mum digs through the poop, cleans the objects, presumably. Takes a picture and proudly shows the world online. Why? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Like, why? And yet again, I feel like that mother's probably laughing like oh my god look at my son my son is so funny haven't I got the funniest toddler ever and then in the meantime their child is literally swallowing stones and it out. This has the same vibe as the woman in one of my mummy and me social groups whose six year old was constipated for 10 days before they noticed. Homegirl expected us to laugh with her about the situation. When she was met with concern for the child and questions about how it took so long to notice, she doubled down and told us that not everyone can be a perfect parent and know when their child doesn't crap. Okay, but like a week and a half. Exactly, like something tells me that is just lazy parenting. I can understand maybe having constipation for like a day, but 10 days. Like that is not normal. At that point, you need to go to a hospital like a doctor. You know, if your child can't poop for 10 days, that's like dangerous. And yet, 
like, and if we look at them objects, like, they're not small objects. They are very big. Two and a half year old toddler swearing results in mouth soap, hot sauce, and slapping this per kid. This reminds me of something I seen in Super Nanny years ago. Basically, I think a kid was misbehaving and the parent basically put soap in its mouth. What type of parent does that? Hell, my two and a half year old won't stop swearing. He knows when to use it and how. It's constant F words or shut the hell up. If a child is two and a half and they're speaking like that, where are they hearing it from? Something tells me they're getting it from you. He's gotten soap, hot sauce, a slap in the mouth, put in the corner and nothing worse. I've been told to ignore him, but I'm not going to be that mum the grocery store with my kids saying F word down the aisle. What do I do? I think a good thing for you to do is first of all, not do what you're currently doing, but don't swear in front of your kids. You know, if your child is two and a half and is swearing, like that is not good. I'm not really up to date with babies, so I don't know what a two and a half year old looks like. In my head, they look like a baby that came out of whim about five months ago. However, like two and a half year olds are walking around and talking and yours is chatting like that. Like that just seems like a you problem. It seems like you've been saying that in front of the child, not expecting the child to repeat it and then it does. And this is what people in the comments had to say. You're reinforcing it and yikes with those punishment, just ignore it. I would not punish, that's way too little, just don't give it any attention. I don't think there's an issue of punishing children who sometimes kids misbehave and they need to be punished to learn. However, there are certain punishments which you can do which are good and actually work compared to hers. You don't put soap or hot sauce in their mouth. You don't slap them. You explain to them why what they've done is not good and maybe put them in a timeout. For example, they're not allowed to watch television, etc. You don't do what you done. Please refrain from those types of punishments for many, many reasons. Instead, try to redirect, use positive reinforcement when he uses kind words and natural consequences, i.e. no TV time as a result of swearing. Exactly, like I feel like that's a decent punishment. You know, that's a punishment where it doesn't actually hurt them. You know, you're not putting soap in their mouth. Jesus, he's a baby. My two and a half year old says crap all the time and I just ignore it. He only does it because you react it and at that age, they do not understand consequences. So those barbaric punishments are just for your own satisfaction and will not accomplish anything. Ignore, do not react. Don't go to grocery store if you're going to abuse your child if the baby talks the F word in public. Okay, so I don't necessarily agree with the whole ignore it thing. Like, I don't think that's a thing you should ignore. Put it this way, if your child is two and a half and it's swear and that's probably not ideal. Is it the end of the world? No. Is it bad if they say it in the house? Probably not. If they're out in public and they say it, people probably will raise an eyebrow at you. However, yet again, there is a way to punish a child and a way not to punish a child. And the way that original poster was talking about the punishments is not all right. And then someone else said, pull the Santa card. Okay, I don't think telling the child that Santa doesn't exist is going to stop them from swearing. Maybe not swearing in front of that child might help a wee bit. Has she tried swearing less in front of her child? What a horrible woman. Exactly, let's not pretend it didn't hear it from an adult. Like, yeah, it could have heard it from another child, but it most likely heard it from an adult, aka you, the mother. This, where's the kid hearing these phrases so frequently that they have learned their appropriate use? Maybe stop swearing, replace the curse words with other words that are appealing instead, and let the problem resolve on its own. I feel like instead of you putting soap inside your baby's mouth, just don't swear in front of it. And yet again, the kids obviously picked it up from an adult. It's kind of the same with racism, homophobia, and other discrimination. You know, a lot of times the kids don't understand that it's wrong. They learn it from the parents, and then they just get used to it, and then and that's a bad thing because they grow up teaching that to more people. So yeah, if you do have a young child, maybe be a responsible adult and don't swear in front of it. Discussing how dads are uncomfortable by changing their infant daughter's diapers makes me deeply uncomfortable. Am I overreacting? Let me preface this by saying I love my husband and he is the most amazing daddy to our kids. So this by no means is an attack or me putting him down. I'm genuinely curious. Any other fathers with girls intimidated by changing her diaper? Anyone's husband intimidated by changing your baby girl's diaper? Yes, very hard for Graham to get used to and me. Far more folds to ensure or clean. Blank hated changing the girls when they were young. His explanation was always he didn't have those parts and was worried he'd accidentally hurt them while cleaning them. Like it genuinely stressed him out and he only did it when necessary. Blank definitely didn't love it and mainly did it when he had to. Same with the baths. Okay, so on Reddit people were pretty split with that post. 50% of the people agreed with them, 50% of the people didn't agree with them. I can understand if you're a man and you've got a daughter how you might be a tiny bit nervous about cleaning them. You're not a woman so you don't really know about their body parts etc. I think a good way to get around that is just to practice more. You know, watch the mother do it and do it with the mother. So it means that if the mother isn't there, then you know what to do. However, part of me also thinks it's got to do with laziness. I don't know. I just feel like some of them dads just don't want to clean the baby because it's messy and they're using that as an excuse. I think it depends on if it comes from it. Okay, there's a lot of folds to dress. I'm worried I'm going to miss some. Versus A, I can't change my daughter because I'm a man and that's inappropriate. Former is at least somewhat understandable. The latter is gross. Edit, but getting over it is the only reasonable result. That's basically how I feel like I can understand how you might be intimidated or nervous because you know you're not that type of person, i.e. a woman. You know, if you're cleaning the baby boy, you probably have a bit of a better understanding because you are a man yourself. So in that case, practice makes perfect. The more you give it a go, the better you'll get at it. However, just because you're a dad doesn't mean you can't clean your daughter. Like, it's not inappropriate. That is your child. You know, you have to clean it. I really hope you wouldn't let your child just walk around like a dirty diaper. And then yet again, part of me also thinks they just don't want to do it. So they use that as an excuse. You know, they're like, oh, I'm a man. I'm not a woman. I don't understand.
understand them parts so you know it's better for you the mum to do it. To me it just sounds like laziness. Babies are good luck charms. Hi mum has been seeing many posts about bad luck resulting from marriage during your Chinese zodiac year. My husband and I got married during my unlucky year and we have some challenging life events since. Is there anything I can do to cancel slash undo this aside from divorcing and remarrying? Have a child that is lucky for you and balance out the bad luck. Find out what sign brings you luck. I feel like if you're having issues with your relationship the last thing you should do is have a child. Like that is probably one way to put a bullet in that relationship. Well everyone knows the best way to repair a relationship is to have a baby. Yeah that is definitely the best decision you could make. Also why is she talking about zodiac signs and getting married? Who actually does that? This just brings me back to the point of zodiac signs. I believe a lot of people who believe in zodiac signs are crazy. How are you going to be like my marriage isn't working because we got married at this time and it means this zodiac sign and we should have got married at this time instead. Maybe the reason the relationship is not working is because of you. My son is 14 months old and I leave him to play in the bath while I tidy his room. Okay we are literally half a sentence in and there's so much wrong with that. Your son is 14 months old and you leave him in the bath and tidy his room. Do you not understand how young a 14 month old is? Which is right across from the bathroom since he was maybe 10 months old. The bath is filled to a safe level and my son is too short to climb out. I'll keep checking on him as I walk past to the laundry or kitchen but he's perfectly capable of privacy during bath time. He normally pulls the plug out on his own and that's when I'll pull him out as the bath will be slippery here. I try not to protect my son from every little thing as he needs to learn his own way. Keep in mind this child is 14 months old. Like this is literally a baby that is just turned one. I'd honestly be more worried about leaving them alone at six because they can climb out of the tub and go in the cupboards making a mess rather than cleaning themselves. I don't know if that's a real comment or if that is just a troll and rage bait. I'm really hoping that this mother is not leaving her 14 month old baby in a bath alone. And there's no such thing as leaving the bath water at a safe level. That does not exist. Like it doesn't matter if the bath is filled up to the top halfway or just got a millimeter in it. Your child can still drown. Oh man my son's 15 months yesterday. He's super smart for his age and I still couldn't. Babies can drown in a teaspoon of water so there's no safe level. You being across the room or not I wouldn't recommend this at all. Thank god by the looks of it someone has a functioning brain. Like who actually leaves their 14 month old in a bath? At that point child protective services need to get called and like that baby needs to be taken off her. Because one day you're going to check on that baby and it's going to be floating in the bath. It's going to be dead. Aside from the very obviously per judgment and risk assessment. Is she seriously suggesting a 14 month old left in the bath alone will just get on with washing himself? Covering up under their armpits with their little ravioli hands. Making sure they detangle. Girl you're delusional. She's not just delusional she's also dangerous. I'm so sorry 14 month old in a bath alone. Are you asking for it to end up in a coffin? For real this person's brain is broken even thinking about the privacy of a 14 month old. You clean their bums and do everything for them. There's no possible way to give them privacy nor should you try. I feel like that mother's like one of them consent mothers. Have you seen that where like mothers have asked their babies for consent to change their nappy? I don't know if it's like a real thing or if it's like a fake thing to piss people off on the internet. I've seen a video of a woman basically talking about how she asked her child for consent to change the nappy and if the child doesn't respond or cries and she'll not do it. All I'm gonna say is thank god my mum is nothing like these mothers because I'm telling you right now these kids are gonna have trauma. I need a sitter for my eight month old daughter ASAP between the hours of 7.30 to 6pm Monday to Friday. Preferably near Fountain Ranch. As of now I can only afford $150 per week. I need help ASAP please PM me if you're interested. Okay so we're gonna do a little bit of math. 7.30 to 6pm. How many hours is that? I think like 10 and a half hours. Five days a week and you're getting $150 per week. Let's figure out how much that is an hour. Okay so I've done some calculations in my calculator. I don't know if I calculated it correctly. I think that's three dollars an hour. I think it actually might be less. I think it might be 30 cent an hour. I mean if you want to pay someone that little to babysit your child you're just going to get the local crackhead. And then one day you'll come home and that crackhead and child will be missing. I've realised how big of it it is to ask someone to care for a baby even if it's for a day. I give curdles to people who provide care to babies and for free grandparents normally. If your grandparents watch your child they're doing it for free usually. And whenever it comes to childcare you know it's probably best to go to more expensive route. You can go as cheap as you want however the care might be cheap. You know do you want your child to be taken care of by a professional or somebody who doesn't know what they're doing? Not wanting granny to kiss your kid in the mouth valley. Expecting grandparents to provide childcare and never change a diaper? You need therapy. Mother-in-law just gave two year old first non-parenting clothing and diaper change without permission. Husband and I decided before baby is born that we would be the only two to ever change our diapers. While we love and trust our families we both work in social work and just didn't feel comfortable with other people having that intimate interaction with our daughter. We are one paragraph in and I already hate this person. Changing a diaper is not an intimate interaction. It's called a basic one. You know what is intimate about changing a diaper? Husband works from home and father-in-law watches the little one every day. Alerting husband of when a diaper change is needed. Mother-in-law joins his visits once a week. I just received a phone call from husband that he went to check on the trio today and noticed that our daughter was wearing a different outfit. He asked why and mother-in-law said she changed her because she was wet from the water table and poopy. Okay so their child has shot themselves which is normal for a child and of course they're going to have an issue if the grandparents 
parents cleaning the baby. In two years, not a single other person has ever taken off her daughter's clothes or changed her diapers other than us. Other than our pediatrician, not a single other person in the world has seen her bare bottom. Father-in-law has called the husband for hundreds of diaper changes. We've had similar conversations about kissing her in the mouth. I feel like mother-in-law wants to have more of those experiences that we've decided to reserve for parents and doesn't see the harm. I'm shocked and angry, not even sure how to begin having this conversation or what next steps to take. Okay, so from what I'm getting from that post is that you are crazy. I can actually sort of understand that kissing part. You know, whenever babies are very, very young, they are quite vulnerable to diseases. If someone has a cold and kisses a child and then that baby gets a cold, it could die. So I do understand that bit about the kissing. However, changing a baby diaper isn't an intimate experience. It's called basic cleanliness. What I'm getting from that parent is that they would much rather have their daughter walking around in a dirty nappy than have the grandparents change it. If you think your mother-in-law has nefarious purposes changing your diaper's kids, then A, don't let her watch your kid, and or B, you might be the sick one. The mother claims that she works in social care, so I can understand why she might feel that way. However, that still is a bit extreme. There are family members out there who will abuse children. It is awful. You sort of do have to look at everyone with side eye. It could be a grandparent, an auntie, an uncle, even the own parent. However, yet again, I feel like you are being a bit too extreme. The kissing part I can understand, however, the diaper change. There's nothing intimate about that. It's basic cleanliness. The way she labelled changing the daughter's clothes as an experience reserved for the parents gives me super creepy purity ring vibe. And she thinks mother-in-law is seeking out that experience to get closer to the kid instead of it just being about logistics. Why is original poster making it sound like a carnival ride? That's what I'm thinking. Like, I don't know something's up with the parents. And yet again, I can understand from their job perspective why they might feel that way. However, it is very extreme. I'm starting to think that they're the weird ones. Wow, what a paranoid control freak. She's horrified because her kid's diaper was changed. And a diaper change isn't an intimate interaction. It's a hygienic interaction. Yet again, I'm agreeing with you. Like, by the sounds of it, that parent would much rather the child run around in a dirty diaper than it actually run around in a clean one. Put it this way, whenever your child gets a disease, the only person's gonna be blamed is you. And quite frankly, I kind of feel a bit bad for that child. Like, that child's too young to know what's going on. In years to come, it's gonna look back and think, why did my mother not let my granny and granddad change my diaper? Well, anyways, guys, let's leave that video there. That is some mothers who should not have children. Out of all mothers out there, 99.9% .9 of mothers are amazing mothers. They raise really good kids. However, as you can tell, not every mother is perfect, and none of these mothers were perfect. It would seem like a more crazy mothers like this. Let me definitely will. Chris Becker, subscribe, and see you all tomorrow for another video.